Hey guys, we are back to talk about our second and third rules of natural deduction. And those are the conjunction introduction and the conjunction elimination rules. So before we can look at the formal rules, let's take a look at what the conjunction means. So if you don't remember, conjunction is the dot. So conjunction, what does it mean? Well, it means and the idea and, just like we would use it in a sentence, like saying, I have an apple and an orange. You could write that A and or dot O. Oh. And that expresses that both ideas are true. The first idea is true and the second idea is true. So say you came over to my house and I told you that I have a white stuffed animal, cat. Yay. And then later I told you that I have a black one. Well, doesn't it make sense that if I have a white one, I also have a black one, that it's truthful to say that I have a white one and a black one. So that's what the conjunction lets us do. It lets us take two ideas and link them together and say that they're both true. Conversely, if I tell you I have a white one and a black one, it makes sense that I have a white one, the separate idea, and also the separate idea that I have a black one. So when two ideas are linked together with a conjunction in between them, it's also okay to break them apart and use each one individually. So. Let's take a look at the conjunction introduction rule first. And that looks like this. All right, this is what the conjunction introduction rule looks like. And as you can see, it looks like one of our regular natural deduction problems. We've got our scope line. We've got our two premises. And they're separated from the rest of the problem by sitting on that little shelf, we have justified each of our premises as an assumption. And if you look closely, what's happening here is that on line one, we say that we have P. On line two, we say that we have Q. So we know that P is true, and we know that Q is true. So the conjunction introduction rule says that if we know each of those parts is separately true, then the two parts together is also true. So on line three, we introduce the conjunction. We introduce the and symbol by saying P and Q. And then the way we justify that is by saying we introduced a conjunction, so dot, and then introduction is symbolized by just writing an I. And then we say where we got each piece. So we got the first piece from line one, and the second piece from line two. And for conjunction and introduction, that's all you need. You need to have the first piece on line, the second piece on a line, and then you can put them together with a conjunction sign in between them. Okay, so now we've seen conjunction introduction. Let's take a look at conjunction elimination, which is basically the opposite. All right, this is what the conjunction elimination rule looks like. And what it tells us is that, say, on the line, we've got P and Q. So we, knew, we know that the idea P and Q is true. So remember, conjunction tells us that if the whole thing is true, then the first piece has to be true and the second piece has to be true. So doesn't it make sense that if we just wanted the P out of that, we can just take it right out because it's a conjunction. We know that both P's are true, so P by itself should be true. So we can write P on the line by itself, and all we need to do to justify that is write the line where we saw P in the conjunction, and then put conjunction elimination, or dot E, to say what rule we use to get it. And so it's not really eliminating the conjunction, but it's when you have an expression with a conjunction in it, and you just want a piece of it, it's sort of like you're taking the conjunction part away and you're keeping the piece that you want. Okay, so now that we've seen both the rules, conjunction introduction 
and conjunction elimination, which showed us how to put things together with a conjunction and how to take them apart with a conjunction. Uh, we can look at an example. So see how they would work in an actual argument. 